Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will read class 8's chapter. This is Jodi's fawn. Fawn are the young ones of deers and does. Does are female deers. This story revolves around a young boy named Jodi and a little fawn who has been orphaned because of Jodi's father. So let's see what's there in the story. Before you read, often instead of rushing to the doctor to treat a small cut or burn, we find quick and effective cures using things available at home. This happens a lot at our homes that when there's small problem or small injury like stomach ache, toothache, cold and cough, instead of rushing to the doctor, we find home remedy. In this story, Jodi's father has been bitten by a rattlesnake. He quickly kills a doe and uses its heart and liver to draw out the poison. Jodi wonders what will happen to the little fawn left without a mother. In this story also, Jodi's father, who was bitten by a rattlesnake, rattlesnake is a very poisonous snake. Rather than rushing to the doctor, he quickly kills a doe and uses its heart and liver to cure himself to draw out the poison. Jodi, Jodi who is a small boy, just keeps thinking about the fawn, what will happen to it because the fawn was left without mother in the forest. The story is written by Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings. And there is a movie, Hollywood movie, made on the same story with the name The Yearling, which was made in 1946. The story is very interesting. Let's read it. Jody allowed his thoughts to drift back to, that means to go back to, the fawn. He could not keep it out of his mind. He had held it in his dreams, in his arms. He slipped from the table and went to his father's bedside. Penny lay at rest. His eyes were open and clear, but the pupils were still dark and dilated. Dilated means enlarged. So we have seen that Jody's father, Penny, killed a doe to draw out the poison as he was bitten by a rattlesnake. And the doe's young one, the fawn, was left alone in the forest. Jody could not stop thinking about the fawn. His mind kept going back to the fawn. He... he held that fawn in his dreams, in his arms. He was dreaming about the fawn. So he went from where he was sitting to his father's bedside, where Penny, his father, was resting. Penny's eyes were still were open, wide and clear. He was out of danger, but his pupils were still dark and they were enlarged. Pupils are the inner part in the eyes. Jody said, how are you feeling, Pa? Just fine, son. Old death has gone thieving elsewhere. But wasn't it a close shave? Close shave means a narrow escape. So Jody asked his father his health and father replied that death has gone thieving somewhere else. That means death could not reach him. It has gone away thieving someone else's life. But it was a narrow escape from death. I agree, Penny said. I'm proud of you boy. The way you kept your head and did what was needed. Kept your head means stayed calm in a difficult situation. So Jody agreed that it was a close shape. Then Penny appreciated Jody by saying that he was proud of him because he kept calm in a difficult situation and did what was needed at that time. Pa, yes sin. Pa, do you recollect the doe and the fawn? Then Jody talked about what was in his heart to his father. He reminded Penny of the doe and his fawn. I can never forget that. The poor doe saved me. That's certain. Pa, the fawn may be out there yet. It may be hungry and very scared. I suppose so. Pa, I'm a big boy now and don't need to drink milk. Why don't I go and see if I, if I can find the fawn and bring it here and raise it? Penny lay quiet, staring at the ceiling. So when Jody reminded Penny of the doe, Penny said that he could never forget that doe because he is alive because of that doe only. Then Jody said that the fawn, his little one, must be out there in the forest alone, hungry and scared. And Penny agreed. Then Jody said that he was a big boy and didn't need to drink milk. He can just bring the fawn and give his share of milk to the fawn and raise, the, raise it. Penny remained quiet for a little while looking at the ceiling. Boy, you've got me hemmed in. Hemmed in means put in such a situation where one cannot say no. It won't take much to raise it, Pa. It'll soon start eating leaves and acorns. Acorns are small brown nuts. You're smarter than boys of your age. 
We took its mother and it wasn't to blame. Surely it seems ungrateful to leave it to starve. Starve means to die out of hunger. So I can't say no to you. I never thought I'd live to see another day. Then Penny told Jody that you have put me in a situation where I cannot say no. And Jody said that the fawn will not take much to grow. Soon it will start eating leaves and small nuts. And Penny praised Jody by saying that he was smarter than boys of his age. And we have taken the life of the fawn's mother. But we can't be blamed because the situation demanded so. Penny further said that it would not be good to leave that small fawn in the forest to starve and to fend by himself. So he cannot say no to Jody. And he also accepted that he did not think that he would live another day. He was safe. He was alive because of the doe only. Can I ride back with Millville and see if I can find it? Tell your mother I said you can go. He sidled back to the table and sat down. His mother was pouring coffee for everyone. Sidled back means walk back quietly, trying not to be noticed. Then Jody asked his father if he can ride back to forest with Millville. Millville is another character in the story with a horse. So he asked if he can go back to the forest and see if he can find the fawn. And Penny allowed him saying that, tell your mother that I have allowed you to go. And then Jody quietly came back to his table, sat down. His mother was in the room. She was putting coffee for everyone. He said, Ma, Pa says I can go back, go bring back the fawn. She held the coffee pot in midair. What fawn? The fawn belonging to the doe we killed. We used the doe's liver to draw out poison and save Pa. She gasped. Well, for pity's sake, Pa says it would be ungrateful to leave it to starve. Jody asked his mother if he can go back to the forest and bring the fawn back. Jody's mother was surprised to hear about the fawn and she asked what fawn and then Jody explained that it was the same fawn whose mother was killed to save father's life. Jody's mother was probably reluctant and she tried to say something but Jody interfered saying that Pa has told, has said that it would not be good to leave the fawn alone in the forest to starve. Doc Wilson said, that's right ma'am, nothing in the world comes quite free. The boy's right and his daddy's right. Doc Wilson, who was present there, he also agreed and said that nothing in this world comes quite free because you have taken the life of Fawn's mother for your own benefit, for saving Penny's life. It is not good to leave the Fawn alone in the forest. That is why the boy and his father is right. Millville also said that uh, the boy can ride back to the forest with me and I will help him find the Fawn. She sat down the pot helplessly. Well, if you'll give it your milk, we've got nothing else to feed it. Now mother was helpless. She had to agree, but she also said that we have nothing else to feed the fawn except your milk. You, If you can give your milk to the fawn. Jody had already agreed to give it his milk to the fawn. Millville said, come on boy, we've got to ride. Ma Baxter asked anxiously, you'll not be gone long. Jody said, I'll be back before dinner for sure. Now Millville Asked, told the boy, come on, we have to go. Mother, who was a little worried, she asked that Jody will not be out for a long time. And Jody said that he would come before dinner. Millville mounted his horse and pulled Jody up behind him. He said to Millville, do you think the fawn's still there? Will you help me find him? We'll find him if he's alive. How you know it's a he? The spots were all in a line. On a doe fawn, Pa says, the spots are every which way. That means in different directions. So Jody, uh, Millville was preparing his horse and pulled Jody behind him to make him sit behind him. Then Jody asked Millville if he will help him find the fawn and if he thinks that the fawn is still there. And Millville answered that if the fawn is alive, we will definitely find him. And then he also asked Jody that how does he know if it is a he fawn and not a she fawn. And Jody answered that in a he fawn, the spots are all in a line which was there in the fawn which he saw. Whereas in a doe fawn, the spots are in all a direction. They are not in one line. That is how he knows that it is a he fawn. Jody gave himself over to the thoughts of the fawn. They passed the abandoned clearing. Clearing is an open space in a forest. He said, cut to the north, Millville. It was up here that Pa got bitten by the rattlesnake and... Kill the doe and I saw the fawn. Jody was thinking about the fawn. 
they passed open space in the forest jody told melville to go towards north because that was the place where his father got bitten by the snake and he killed the doe and jody saw the fawn suddenly jody was unwilling to have melville with him if the fawn was dead or could not be found he could not have his disappointment seen and if the fawn was there the meeting would be so lovely and so secret that he could not endure to share it all of a sudden jody did not want melville with him because if the fawn was dead or jody could not find the fawn he would be very disappointed and he did not want anyone to see the disappointment on the other hand if the fawn was there the meeting between him and the fawn would be so lovely and so secret that jody did not want to share it with anyone he said it's not far now but the scrub is very thick for a horse i can make it on foot so jody told melville that the place is not very far from here but the scrub the tall grasses are very thick and it is not good for horse and jody said that he can go on foot from there but i'm afraid to leave you boy suppose you got lost or got bitten by snake too i'll take care it might take me long time to find the fawn if he's wandered leave me off right here but melville was scared of leaving jody alone and he was worried he said that if you got lost in the forest or if you also got bitten by the snake then jody said that he would take care of himself it would take him a long time to find the fawn it is not good for them to stay here and then he told melville to leave him there all right but you take it easy now you know north here and east there and there the tall pine makes a bearing so long bearing means the tall pines are acting as compass to help find the direction so melville agreed to leave jody there and he told him the direction he told him that the tall pines are making direction and he told him to take care of himself so long Mil melville i am obliged obliged means i am thankful so melville went away and jody told him that he was thankful he waited for the sound of the hooves to end then cut to the right the scrub was still only his own crackling of twigs sounded across the silence he wondered for an instant if he had mistaken his direction so jody waited for the sound of the hooves the sound of the legs of the horse to disappear to end and then he went towards the right the grass the scrub were not moving they were still only jody's legs when they fall on small twigs that means small plants the crackling sound of those twigs were can be heard in the silence and jody for an instant he was just wondering if he had mistaken if he is wrong with his direction then a buzzard rose in front of him buzzard is a uh, a large bird that looks like a vulture and it eats dead animals and flapped into the air he came into the clearing under the oaks buzzard sat in a circle around the carcass carcass means the dead body of the doe they turned their heads on on their long scrawny necks scrawny means thin and bony and hissed at him he threw his bow at them and they flew into an adjacent tree the sand showed large cat prints but big cat killed fresh and they had left the door to the carrion birds carrion birds means flesh eating birds so jody saw bazaar they were eating they were sitting uh, around the dead body of the door and they were eating when jody came there they looked towards jody with their thin and long bony neck and then jody threw threw uh, a, a, the wood that he had in his hand on them and they flew to the adjacent tree and from there they started looking at jody jody saw the footprints of big cat that means lion or tiger probably but these big cats killed fresh so they have just left the door for the flesh eating birds he parted the legs parted means separated or pushed aside he parted the grass at the place where he had seen the fawn it did not seem possible that it was only yesterday the fawn was not there he circled the clearing there was no sound no sign the buzzard clacked their wings impatient to return to their business he returned to the spot where the fawn had emerged and dropped on all four fours studying the sand for the small hoof prints the night's rain has washed away all tracks except those of big of cat and buzzard so now jody moved the grass at the place where he had seen the fawn 
the night wa the night rain has washed all the footprints except for those of big cats and the buzzards they were getting impatient they wanted to return to their food they wanted to return to their business jody took a circle of all the clearing he looked around all the clearing because, but there was no sign of the fawn and he also returned to the spot where the fawn emerged where the fawn he has seen now studying the footprint small hoofs he could find nothing but those of big cat and footprint of the buzzards jody looked all around the place all around the clearing but he couldn't find the fawn now let's see what happens further in the story movement directly in front of him startled him startled means alarmed so that he tumbled backward he felt backward there was movement just in front of jody and he was alarmed and he fell backward the fawn lifted its face on his it turned its head with wide wandering motion and shook him through with the stare of its liquid eyes there was fawn in front of jody the fawn lifted his face and looked at jody he gave wide motion to his head he shook his head and he stared at jody with his liquid eyes it was quivering the fawn was shaking slightly it made no effort to rise or run jody could not trust himself to move the fawn did not at all get up or did not run and jody also could not move he was afraid that the fawn will run away he whispered it's me jody said very slowly it's me the fawn lifted its nose scented him he reached out one hand and laid it on the soft neck the touch made him delirious delirious means extremely excited the fawn lifted its nose and it tried to smell jody jody reached his hand on the fawn he touched his soft neck with his hand and he felt extremely excited when he touched the fawn he moved forward on all fours until he was close beside it so jody slowly moved forward with all four of two of his leg and two of his hand crawling slowly he put his arms around the body its body a light convulsion passed over it but it did not move so jody put his arm around the body of the fawn a light shiver very small shiver passed over the fawn but the fawn did not move he stroked its side as gently as though the fawn were a china deer and it might break it jody patted the fawn very gently as if it was a china deer china deer is a clay deer that can easily broke break so fearing that it might run away or he jody wanted to be very gentle to the fawn so he stroked it very gently its skin was very soft it was sleek and clean sleek means smooth and shiny and had a sweet scent of grass the skin of the fawn was very smooth shiny and clear it was very soft and it was smelling of grass he rose slowly and lifted the fawn from the ground its legs hung limply they were surprisingly long and he had to hoist the fawn as high as possible under his arm hoist means pull up higher so jody lifted the fawn and he his leg the legs of the fawn were very long surprisingly so jody has to lift it high, as high as as high as possible he put kept the fawn under his arm he was afraid that it might kick and bleat at the sight and smell of its mother bleat means cry so jody was afraid that the fawn might kick him or cry seeing his mother's body he skirted the clearing and pushed his way into the thickest so jody just covered the eyes of the fawn and he tried to cover the clearing and just went into the thick grass it was difficult to fight through with his burden the fawn's leg caught in the bushes and he could not lift his own with freedom it was difficult to go through the long grass the doe's legs were also going into the bushes the dry, dry grass and jody also could not lift his leg with freedom he tried to shield its face from pricking vines its head bobbed with its stride so uh, jody tried to cover the face of the fawn from pricking from pinching grasses pinch uh, sm uh, big grasses which were like pinching its head bobbed with its stride bobbed with its strides means moving up and down with its with each step so as jody was taking his step the fawn's head was also moving up and down his heart thumping with the marvel of its acceptance of him Jody was very happy his heart was thumping high with the uh, with the fact that the fawn has accepted Jody so Jody was very happy he reached the trail and walked as fast as he could until he came to the intersection 
with the road home so jody just walked on the raw trail of mud or grass on the ground and he walked as fast as he could until he reached the place where there was road to the home he stopped to rest and set the fawn down on its dangling legs it wavered on them it looked at him and bleated so at the intersection jody stopped for some time to take some rest he also put the fawn down on its hanging legs as he was put down he wavered that means he felt shaky for some time and looked at jody and started crying he said enchanted jody was totally fascinated by the fawn i'll carry you after i get my bread so jody said that i will carry you once i take some rest he remembered his father saying that a fawn would follow if it had first been carried he started away slowly the fawn star stared after him he came back to it and stroked it and walked away again it took a few wobbling step towards him and cried piteously it was willing to follow him it belonged to him it was his own he was light headed with his joy he wanted to fondle it to run now jody remembered that his father has once said if a fawn is carried once it will follow so jody started jody slowly started walking the fawn looked at jody then jody came back to the fawn and stroke it slowly and then walked again it took a few wobbling wobbling means shaky steps towards jody and then started crying the fawn was willing to follow jody now the fawn was following jody and it belonged to jody he was light headed light headed means unable to think clearly with the joy jody was so happy so light headed that he was not able to think clearly he wanted to fondle it fondle it means caress lovingly he wanted to lovingly press it he wanted to bring it to himself and to run and romp with it romp means to play so jody wanted to love it jody wanted to play with it to call it to come to him he dared not alarm it so he did not want to alarm it or frighten it so he picked it up and carried it in front of him over his two arms so he did not want to care scare him too much by making him run or walk so he again carried him in his arm and he in front of him it seemed to him that he walked without effort now he walked without effort because he was so happy his arms began to ache and he was forced to stop again then he walked on the uh, the fawn followed him at once he allowed it to walk a little distance then picked it up again this the distance home was nothing so jody was carrying the fawn home by partially carrying it it in his lap and uh, in his arms then putting him down when he put him down the fawn started following it then again jody carried and the distance was seeming to be very small because jody was very happy he was overwhelmed with the fact that the fawn belonged to him he could have walked all day and into the night carrying it and watching it follow he was wet with sweat but a light breeze blew through the june morning cooling him so he was tired he was sweating but also a light breeze was blowing which made him cool the sky was as clear as spring water in blue china cup he came to the clearing it was fresh and green after the night's rain he fumbled with the latch and was finally obliged to set down the fawn to manage it now finally jody reached his home he came to the plain area of his house uh it was fresh and green after the night's rain and jody fumbled with the latch that means he op- he tried to open the latch of his home and finally he put the fawn down then he had an idea he would walk into the house into pani's bedroom when the fawn with the fawn walking behind him now reaching at his doorstep he had this idea that he would just walk into his father's room with fawn following him but at the steps the fawn barked barked means he was unwilling to come he was unwilling to do something and refused to climb them he picked it up and went to his father penny lay, where penny lay with closed eyes now jody had to pick the fawn and he went to his father's room jody called pa look penny turned his head jody stood beside him the fawn clutched hard against him It seemed to Penny that the boy's eyes were as bright as the fawn's. He said, "I'm glad you found him." So Jody went into his father's room. Penny turned his head and he saw that Jody was holding the fawn. Penny could see that Jody's eyes were also as bright as the fawn's eyes and he said that, "I'm glad you found him." 
Jodi then went to the kitchen. The fawn wobbled after him. Wobble means walk shakingly. A pan of morning milk stood in the kitchen safe. The cream had risen on it. He skimmed the cream into a jug. He poured milk into a small gourd. He held it out to the fawn. It butted it suddenly, smelling the milk. It butted it suddenly, smelling the milk. He saved it precariously from spilling over the floor. It could make nothing of the milk in the gourd. Precariously means not properly held. Now, after showing the fawn to Penny, Jody went in the kitchen. There was morning fresh milk with cream on it. Jody just removed the cream. Skimming means removing the cream. And then he put the milk in a gourd and then presented it to the fawn. Fawn could not drink it. He could make nothing out of the milk. He dipped his finger in the milk and thrust them into fawn's soft wet mouth. It sucked greedily. When he withdrew them, it bleated frantically and butted him. So since the fawn could not drink milk from the god, Jody dipped his finger into the milk and put it into the fawn's mouth. The fawn sucked the milk greedily. But when Jody took out his finger, he started crying and butted him. That means hitting him slightly. He dipped his finger again and as the fawn sucked, he lowered them slowly into the milk. So again, Jody had this trick. He dipped his finger into the milk and when the fawn was sucking, he slowly lowered his finger towards the milk. The fawn blew and sucked and snorted. Now the fawn started drinking all the milk with making sounds. It stamped its small hoofs impatiently and he started patting his small legs as small kids also do when they are happy or when they are sad they pat their legs similarly the fawn also started stamping his hooves as long as he held his fingers below the level of milk the fawn was content so as long as jody kept his finger to the milk below to the milk the fawn was very happy it closed its eyes dreamily it was ecstasy to feel its tongue ecstasy means a great extremely happiness so jody was extremely happy to feel the fawn's tongue against his hand its small tail flicked back and forth the last of the milk vanished in a swirl of foam and giggle and now finally the fawn was drinking milk from the god and the last drop of the milk also vanished with gurgling with the sound that animals make while drinking so, so this is the story this is how jody finally got its fawn by Mercury Kinnan Rawlings. Now children, I hope you have understood the story. Here are the question answers. Pause the video at each slide of the question answer. Try to do them yourself. Try to read them and answer and then cross check. These are comprehension check from the various pages of your chapter. You can just see them. And this is working with the text. So I will hold the video here so that you get time to cross check the answer. So did you like the story? Do you have any pet? What do you think about animals? Are they lovely? Answer, comment. I will love to read your comment. If you have any problem in the chapter, just let me know and I will definitely answer. Thank you for listening to the story. I hope my stories are helping you. In understanding the chapter, my explanations are helping you. There are other explanations of this class and other classes. Just go into my account and search for it. So that's it for today. Thank you.